Hello guys, I'd like to give you an update. Where am I with test bench reassembly process? I didn't film it a lot, so I, I will tell you just what I already did because I work one hour here and two hours there in the evening and it's, it was just too much hassle to set up video and make everything perfect so you can probably will see that quite a few things changed since our initial build. I just wanted to verify in the beginning that all parts work, we work locked again, nothing crashing, anything like this. So if we need to change hardware, we don't need to re-engineer all water cooling setup on its own. And everything works fine. So right now I'm already building the things as I see them. Few changes that I did from the very beginning. As you remember, the last video we installed motherboard block, and because motherboard was out of the system, I decided also to change a tray that motherboard is sitting on. The original tray I used was like this. This was um, about probably three inches longer than the one I have now. Also, motherboard kind of hanging out a little bit away from the motherboard tray, and it wouldn't be my preferred way under normal circumstances, I really need a little bit more space in this area. So I can work with tubing and um, access things when I need to. So I decided that I will save this much space if I move from the bigger tray to the smaller tray. That's what I did. Next, next thing I realized also if we ever decide and we'll be able to try three SLI or quad type of setup because motherboard allows for a GPU type of um, configuration, I wouldn't be able to use the power supplies that originally I put in place. It was a modular unit and that was the main reason I wanted it, but uh, I figured out it's just too small. And um, the maximum I can support with this is just a couple GPUs. So I shifted to power supply, plus power supply from Silent Sniper and also the system is not modular it's uh, give me a bit more headroom and obviously i don't want to buy yet another power supply that uh, just to make things a little bit nicer so it's not a big deal for me the main thing is that i have now enough cables to connect everything i want and i will figure out all cabling more or less nice way i hope oh interesting thing that uh, it was uh, i just noticed that uh, j2 sends the building basically a very similar thing but he got actual not s8 he got a test bench version and i'm really happy that i went to this incomplete s8 uh, system so it gave me a little bit more breathing with working with all radiator and stuff so i don't need to mount anything on the side or things like this so it's much will be much more convenient things uh, can be tucked under the motherboard tray so all this cabling business is not that bad um, so it's nothing I haven't worked here yet but nevertheless so I, I wired all cables that I need for multiple GPUs and I uh, have them all here and uh, if anything needs to be changed quickly we can uh, start adding GPUs or switch GPUs and I have enough power just route it right away so I don't need to uh, tingle with cables one more time, which is a big deal. Uh, also, I decided that I will be separating um, reservoir and pump compass that originally we have in place. The reason for that, that uh, the how the reservoir pump combo was assembled, it's required to pump facing down with its controls. And I assume that we might have certain tests when we want to verify uh, what results getting like speed one, two, three, four, five from D5 barrier unit. And I really wanted to have easy and convenient access to my controls on D5 barrier. So I decided to separate two units and turn a pump such ways that I can access it. So you see it's a little bit unconventional way I did it here. I put them facing forward to the case so I can see all my controls right there. I slipped cables, try to make them a little bit better. Also use some Dynoc tape that uh, Bill Owen gave to me a while ago and I still keep using this little piece they sent me as a gift and uh, I keep using it for so many builds uh, for quite a few years now. It's now look a little bit nicer than it was originally. And also I slipped the cable, I, I decide to put three pin connector on it so I can power up it from the fan control. I have 30 watts fan controller and uh, from the specification of the pump I shouldn't be exceeding 17 watts at the maximum speed so we have quite a few 
enough headroom to work it this way. The only thing that um, the cables was really tricky to work with. I would want to tell you that um, if you want to put three pin connector on original D5 cables, it's a really bitch to deal with because cable gauge is so outrageous big. Obviously you just simply cannot crimp a fan uh, pin just as is. So you have to shave a little bit of uh, insulation and make it smaller so we can crimp with through the through the small amount of insulation to make it fit. Also cable so big it can't even fit connector itself. So again you need to shave a little bit more to make it a bit narrow. So the things went in. But when it's done it's uh, worked out pretty good and um, I will just plan to run two channels on maximum 12 volts all the time and just and also it will show me my RPM variations because I think that analog marking on traditional D5 it's not very precise so I, I don't want one test have it a little bit um, less or more just judging by turning on the knob so I would like to have opportunity to see how many RPMs I'm getting on this particular speed and that will allow me a little bit more fine tuning of the speed of the pump to make sure that the results that we will going through will be consistent and um, I still a little bit worried that if power draw will be too much or connectors will overheat but uh, if nothing works I just recrimp it to um, standard Morlex connector but for now I think it should work so we'll verify it a little bit later. Uh, another thing that many of you correctly advised and uh, it was on my plan originally that we also need um, a flow meter so I decided to go with Coolant's FM01 unit. It has a, this uh, display right in the front so it's easy to see and again for just measuring purposes so we can see the uh, what flow rate we're getting just at glance so it's it's quite useful another reason that i decided on coolant is because i have a um, flow meter already so i can minimize costs that required to build the system to the minimum as we know we're running under certain budget here now because we separated reservoir i had to put a reservoir somewhere else also shifting from EK to bits power, like bits power a little bit more. Also it has a mounting mechanism that allows to mount reservoir quite easily. So I use this uh, 140 millimeter adapter that I put uh, brackets on. So instead of buying, so to speak, the complete reservoir from my own store, I bought multiple parts. So, so I bought um, uh, clips, separate. I bought two adapters that goes into those two fans uh, holders and uh, I got myself a tube and cup separate. So everything was separate but this allowed me to assemble the way I wanted it. I, 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 I checked out if possibly 250 millimeter tube will work. It's possible look better but the problem is it might interfere with uh, if I would like to put a couple of radiators in in this uh, drop-in unit on the top. So it might interfere and I decided to go with a small unit. This is a 150 millimeter tube that we're going to use here. Yeah, I also rewired a flow meter again to connect it directly to, I'll show you. Just take all the cables out. So flow meter has a ridiculously long cable and I cut it off, put three pin connector on it and also it required 12 volts so that's something that will be powered straight through the controller so first three channels will be only for service purposes only so pump, pump and flow meter because it's the pump cables here if you can see it um, one thing that I, oh, I would like to mention another thing that except the problem with cables which was a little bit tricky to to do is, uh, well this part already discontinued but nevertheless uh, this um, dual pump comber from, from EK has uh, this anti-vibration mounting uh, comes with it and uh, the problem is that they're using uh, M4 screws 
and the holes in case labs brackets they actually a little bit smaller so I was uh, have to make holes a little bit bigger and um, I drill them so I can put the screws on otherwise I couldn't even uh, connect pump correctly to the to the unit but the holes position at least was perfect so I didn't need uh, to make any new holes just to fit the unit so it was it was relatively nice part and um, yeah so I, another thing that I really love um, that I, I didn't do it right in uh, my Venom build I use a separate brackets for every component so all things was kind of crooked in a way so I really like that um, they make a double or triple type of side brackets uh, flex flex bracket that you can connect multiple devices on one unit and uh, everything looks much nicer so this was a uh, good things uh, good thing to have all right I don't want to put that in right now you can see that there's still a bunch of cables uh, not uh, managed because I don't know which one I need um, the same for SSD I don't know when I put it I actually plan possibly I'll just put it on a velcro somewhere under the motherboard tray so you don't see it I'm not sure I will use this part of the case at all for any purpose uh, all the data will go through the top type of um, uh, location I uh, also plan to put fans uh, front and back to get at least some sort of airflow go going through the motherboard area because um, this is an open case and um, certain things will get warm and so at least some minimal type of airflow will, will should be allow us a little bit better results and more stable system in general. That's pretty much it. Um, I'm very close to actual start um, water cooling part, which I will definitely film for you. And um, because cabling management, anybody who dealt with this knows that it takes tons of time and things go slow and it's not a particularly pleasant task to do. And definitely not fun to film, for sure. So, well, that's all I have right now. Uh, still waiting for two GTX 980s coming from NVIDIA who is sponsoring the system and uh, so we'll can start working with configuration that has um, the 770 in place um, maybe we'll do some round uh, tests such as uh, CPU blocks round up for 2014 uh, 15 almost and um, a couple other tests um, also I would like to have a consistent configuration so we can uh, possibly add additional components on a later date and the system will be the same but we will figure it out later see you soon and we will be come up with update on both builds next week